At the moment, I have one special prayer in my heart, and that is that I might say something that would be give assurance and encouragement to those who stand in need of it, which is all of us. We live in a wonderful world, in a wonderful era. There are so many choice people, such lovely things, and so much that is desirable just to live a normal, useful life is a priceless blessing. But it is also a time when certain God-given standards and true principles, which have long been accepted and respected, are being rejected by many. Indeed, it is a day when there is distress of nations with perplexity. The Lord speaks of a time when the love of men shall wax cold and iniquity shall abound. Has that time come? It is most disturbing to learn of the de degradation that exists today. Crime and contention are a daily diet to the reader and to the listener of the news. Crises and violence the world over are rising one after the other, and they come to no satisfactory conclusion. Now, the scriptures tell us that the devil is the foundation of all these things, the foundation of murder and the works of darkness, and that he has great power unto the stirring up of the people to do all manner of iniquity, and to the puffing them up with pride and tempting them to seek for power and authority and riches and the vain things of the world. Such people seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness, but every man walketh in his own way and after the image of his own God whose image is in the likeness of the world. And they deny the power of God, the Holy One of Israel, and they say unto the people, Hearken unto us, and hear ye our precept. For behold, there is no God today, for the Lord has, and the Redeemer hath done his work, and hath given his power unto men. So spoke the prophet Nephi long ago, looking to our day. Yet in all these malignant doings, let us remember that the adversary can go no further than the transgressions of the, the, of the victim may permit him to go, or the wisdom of God may permit. And at any time he may be checked by this superior power. Some may ask, why then does not God, with that superior power, put an end to all evil doings? The reason is, as it is decreed by God, that it must needs be that there is an opposition in all things. And the reason for this opposition is to enable us to evaluate the right as against the wrong, all of us have the God-given right to accept the good or to reject it. We have the right to direct the course of our li own lives, and the Lord will not deny us that right. His purpose in this is to bring all an opportunity to prepare for the greatest of all the gifts of God, eternal life. Man's progress is to a great degree dependent upon his willingness to remain steadfast and immovable, especially when faced with opposition and adversity. 
Yet, as we have said, no person will be, will ever be given more opposition nor trials than he has the potential to overcome and to, or to endure. Some have a battle with infirmities, some with lust, some with affliction, some with envy, some with selfishness, some with sorrow. As I noted that, I jotted down as I remembered the words of that good old song. I like to see, hear that song. One verse giving us hope. When through the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of sorrow shall not be overflow. They'll sometimes come up about to hear. For I will be with thee, thy troubles to bless. And this is important, and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. Paul has given us assurance as well. All of us have the God-given right to accept the good or to reject it. Paul has said that God will suffer, not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able to overcome or to bear. But he will, with temptation, also make a way for to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Brothers and sisters, this is a time of sifting. A time when more than ever in the history of the modern world, the adversary and his followers have shown themselves to be the enemies of God. Yet, as we heard our prophet and president say this morning, we need not fear the fiery darts of the adversary because each of us has the power to avoid becoming entangled in, in sin. More definitely than ever before, the time has come for each member of the church to, may, to keep close to the Lord, to be steadfast by sustaining and upholding and following the counsel of his divinely appointed servants, avoiding, as the Book of Mormon says, the vainness, the frailties, and the foolishness of men. We must purify our lives and sanctify our homes. We must teach our children to be loyal, obedient, honest, to respect the law, and to appreciate protective laws, to have respect for all men, and to love the Lord. All must live and act with courage to espouse and uphold God-given truth and principles because to follow the whims and the enticements and the faithless philosophies of men is to risk losing that which is most precious and most desirable, peace, liberty, and salvation. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you, we are promised. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. The safe thing is still, come, follow me. Yes, this is a wonderful era, primarily because in the restored gospel we have the light of truth, which, if followed, will bring sweet peace and serenity into the lives of those who do so. The Lord has made the world a crucible for testing us, as we have heard today. A place of sifting, out of which may come the blessings of a joyous life here and a glorious life to come. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. 
He has given us the ingredients for successful living. His gospel is a perfect plan for happiness and success for all who will live it. The church with inspired leaders and the promptings of the Holy Ghost for each of us to use as guide and to warn us, to inspire us. We have all these to a greater extent than ever before in the history of man. Thus we are living in a time which is unexcelled. Let us make sure that we do progress as we should, that we are on board the good ship, so to speak, for that ship, the church, will never fail. The works, the designs, and the purposes of God cannot be frustrated. Neither can they come to naught. For God doth not walk in crooked paths, neither doth he turn to the right nor to the left. Therefore his paths are straight, for he doth not vary from that which he has said, and his course is one eternal round. Remember, remember that it is not the work of God that is frustrated, but the work of men. And I conclude with this promise of King Benjamin. My friend, and moreover, I would desire that you, should, that you should consider the blessed and happy state of those that keep the commandments of God. For behold, they are blessed in all things, both temporal and spiritual. And if they hold out faithful to the end, they are received into heaven that thereby they may dwell with God in a state of never-ending happiness. Oh, remember, remember that these things are true, for the Lord God has spoken it. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.